So I have finally pulled the trigger and picked up myself a Hyperstar for my Edge HD 8-inch Celestron SCT. Got this one secondhand off of Cloudy Nights. Saved myself a few hundred bucks doing so. It's version 3 because of that, not version 4. We'll go over that and the differences between the two versions here in a minute. I want to put a video together to go over the Hyperstar if you're not familiar with it, what it can do for you, what some of the features are of it. Then we'll get it installed on the telescope as well as get it out at night and do the collimation for it. Then after that, I'll show you guys my first light images using the Hyperstar. I love this little thing. It's probably the best money I've spent as hobby so far. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so as I mentioned, I picked this up secondhand. So this is actually the version three Hyperstar for the Celestron Edge HD 8 inch. The current version is version four. Uh, there are differences. The version four obviously is going to be a little bit better than the version three. As you can see here in the table, the focal ratio for the version three is F 2.1, where version four is actually 1.9. The focal length is 425 millimeters for version three and 390 millimeters for version four. So a little bit wider field of view. The max image circle is 27 compared to 28 millimeters and the max field of view is 3.8 degrees versus 4.1 degrees on the version 4 so it does have a little more of an advantage over the version 3 but I wasn't concerned with that because I got a really good deal on this uh, so I was willing to accept uh, taking one version back on it uh, just want to go over some things with you first of all when I bought this one it actually came with a camera adapter which is this piece right here that unscrews off that was uh, intended for a Starlight Express CCD camera and I don't own that camera so I needed an adapter to fit my Player One Poseidon C. So I contacted Star Arizona and that's what they provided me with was this adapter here. Uh, and they also came with the, the milled cap M48 right into my camera. My other option would have been I could have bought the camera adapter for a cold ZWO camera and also a step up ring to go to M40 from M42 to M48. I opted just to get one created that would screw directly in with the M48 threads just because I have this fear of the step up ring possibly getting stuck in the camera and wrestling with trying to get it out. So I figured, you know, let's just get it so it fits without needing any adapters. So that's what I did. Star Arizona, if, um, if you've done any research on them on cloudy nights, stargazers anywhere online anybody that had to reach out to them you'll see nothing but good things being said about them their, their customer support was fantastic I, I wish i could remember the lady's name that i spoke to but she was very helpful she um you know weighed my options for me like i said this adapter custom made for my camera or getting the zwo camera adapter and once I decided on this one and she started collecting my personal information and I asked for my email address, I gave her my Deep Space Astro email and she was and she had asked what that was. I told her my YouTube channel and right there on the phone, she brought it up on her computer and became a subscriber. So and also told me she was going to forward it over to her to her boss, too. So, you know, I got a subscriber out of this deal, too. So that was pretty cool. Um, but what I wanted to show you guys is, well, we'll start with the camera adapter. Like I said, it just screws into the front of the Hyperstar here. And one of the nice things about it is we'll take this cap off of here first. And you can see it, it's actually two pieces here, right? So if we unscrew this and it's threaded on the inside, so it's actually a, fil a two inch filter vault. So I can take my two inch filter, set it in place, secure it, and then back together. And now I have my filter in the Hyperstar. Camera goes on this end, obviously. They also have a filter drawer. So if you're shooting mono and you want to do LRGB or SHO or anything like that, the filter drawer would probably be the way to go. You're going to want to swap your filters out, obviously. I'm shooting one shot color camera. So I have to just to use the built in filter drawer. Uh, the other thing with this is this piece on the back on the screws. And I'll show you when we install this what I'm talking about, but this cap back here is actually for your secondary mirror. So you got storage to keep your mirror nice and safe while the Hyperstar is in use. Again, we'll go over that when I get it on the scope. And for now, because we're going to go through collimation, I'm going to remove the filter before we get out there tonight and get everything put back together. And let's talk about all of our screws that we have around here. So uh, the first thing to point out is the one with the, the white nylon bushings on there. There's three of them all the way around. That is just for rotation. So once this is mounting and you're working out your framing of your object, if you loosen all through the three of these screws, 
then you're able to actually rotate your camera without affecting your collimation. So it's a nice way to get things all nice and framed up. The remaining six screws, we have push-pull screws. Again, three sets of them. Obviously, just like when you're collimating an SCT, they will either push or pull depending on which one you turn. Um, and we'll do that again. We'll do that tonight and take a look and see what it is. What I have done here, Starzona's website recommends loosening your screws for the first time you're doing this and mating these two pieces down flush as your zero point. Um, and I've tried that and I suppose it works for some situations. Maybe my corrector plate isn't perfectly aligned. Um, but what I found is it was a little bit easier for me to shim it. So, and you can use any thin piece of plastic. I 3D printed these. They're one millimeter thick. And I just put them in between the push-pull screws and the rotation screw, right? So three points, just like that. It loosened all the screws, had everything sit down flat. So that gave me a one millimeter gap all the way around to start with. So let's get this over to the scope and I'll show you how easy it is to get it installed. Okay, so first thing we need to do is to remove the cap that's gonna hold our secondary mirror like I mentioned previously. So just unscrew the top of it. We're gonna set the Hyperstar off to the side for now. And then your secondary mirror comes out very easily. It's just a retaining ring holding it in. So just unscrew that. Try to be careful not to touch your corrector plate so you don't leave any oil from your fingers behind. Um, might may even be a good idea to wear a pair of nitrile gloves or something. So set your ring aside for now. And then before you pull it out, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but right on the bottom there's a notch. And that notch holds a small grub screw in the secondary mirror housing. So it's always put back in the same exact place that it came out. The cap that we're going to store this in has the same notch in here. So Pay attention to where your notch is at so you're not fumbling around when you pull this out. That way it'll just make it easier to pull back, put back in. And we're just going to slide that into place. And then grab our retaining ring. Screw it back on. And now our secondary mirror is nice and secure, keeping it safe while we're using the Hyperstar. At this point, just take your Hyperstar from where you unscrewed the cap from. And it goes right in place of the secondary mirror. Kind of back turn it a little bit to get the threads set. Take your time. I just hold on to the bottom <laughs> as a guide. I have a fear that I'm going to drop it one of these days. Once those threads bottom out just like that, you're done. You don't want to crank this thing down. The last thing you want to have happen is have this seized up on the corrector plate. And then you're putting undue force on the corrector plate, trying to get it off. And obviously bad things can happen. So once the threads bottom out, we're ready to put the camera on. So let me back the zoom out here a little bit so you can see me do that. We're going to take the cap off of the camera adapter. I'm using my player one Poseidon C. Again, carefully, I always like to cradle it in my hand just in case I get clumsy and drop it and just start threading it on. Same thing like we did with the Hyperstar. I don't like to crank it down once it gets to the threads. I'll hold on to the camera adapter and give this piece maybe just a little bit of a turn. Eighth of an inch tops probably, right? We don't want that to seize either, but it's easier to get that off of there than it is to get this off of the corrector plate. So once we have the camera in place, um, we're ready to wire it up for power and USB. So I have opted to use a cable management guide for mine. I already have it wired up here. And what this will do, this will clip right onto the edge of the telescope on the front here to keep it in place. I can run my USB up and my power up. Now you don't need to use something like this. I 3D printed this. Um, I believe you can actually buy them too as well from other people that are, are printing them and selling them. Um, you don't need this. You can run your cables out and, you know, keep them at 90 degrees when you come off of this. What happens when you do that is you'll start seeing star, you'll start seeing diffraction spikes in, in your big bright stars. Um, I'm not really a big fan of those. So putting this cable guide in here allows, it, it will diffuse those diffraction spikes in the star. You'll still see them a little bit, but they won't be as pronounced. So that's why I did this. I also have a dew shield that I put on here now. If you have one of the flexible dew, dew shields that go on, then it's not a big deal. This bracket is actually meant to have one cable come off of this side and come out, and then the other one to come out this side and come out. And with a flexible dew shield, 
you can make that work, right? The cables will slip right outside of the dew shield and you can run it up to your, your computer, or your, your power supply and such. I have an aluminum dew shield. So what I did was my power cable comes down this side of this bracket and hangs off. And then my USB cable comes down and instead of it jetting out this way, I needed to bring it around this adapter back over to meet up with the power cable, which also meets up with my dew ring heater that I have on here. And the reason I did that, again, is because I have an aluminum dew shield and on the aluminum dew shield from Celestron is a little pocket of sorts that allows you to run cables out from inside where we have everything hooked up to the outside of your, your, of your dew shield to your equipment. So I needed all three cables, power and USB for the camera, as well as power for my dew ring to be able to come out in one spe very specific area. So rotting this back around the outside edge works out well. So you can use this with an aluminum dew shield. We get that in place, all right? So we're ready to go. We're ready to get outside and we'll check collimation. I have ran through collimation once before. Um, honestly, I'm not happy with it. So I'm gonna check it again. And I figured that would be a good time to, to do this video and uh, show you guys how to make those adjustments. It can be challenging. Um, I probably still won't get it perfect, but Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys what you need to do to, to get it close. Okay, so I'm running a live view in sharp cap to check collimation with the Hyperstar right now. And you can see we are off uh, quite a bit. So again, using the push-pull screws, right? We have three pairs of them. We're going to make adjustments to try to get the center obstruction in the center of the airy disc. So we can see where I have my cable management set. So that'll give us an idea. You can also use your fingers so we're just going to go opposite of my cable management, I think, this first time. And I'm going to loosen the longer screws. The screen's going to turn red because my red light's reflecting off my hands occasionally, but that's okay. So we're just going to turn a little bit at a time. See where this gets us. Maybe go the other way. It's really... I've only done this a few times, so I'm not the expert on it, but okay, that was the wrong way. So we want to go clockwise with this one. Let's see if we can't get that closer to the center. And then the plan is, is I'm going to get it as close as I can and then try the, try batting off mask to see if that gets me even closer. And yeah i think that's pretty close you know <laughs> it's gonna take numerous times to get used to doing this obviously especially if you haven't done it before like i said this is probably only my fourth or fifth time messing with this but that looks pretty good i'm just gonna snug down all six of these screws now so it holds its position and then i'm going to bring everything back into focus and put the tri off mask on to see what that looks like Okay, so the next thing I want to do, since I, I've got the stars in focus just by eye, I'm going to jump over into Nina and run an autofocus just to try to get them as tight as I can before I put the mask on. Alright, so autofocus has completed, so I'm going to put the tri off mask on. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, so I've split my tri off mask. I'm trying to get it in the light here. Bear with me, guys. So I've split my tri off mask into two pieces so I can get it around the Hyperstar. You can see at the split right there, I have a dot that I've set right on the triangle. And then I did the same thing all the way around, right? There's three triangles in the tri off mask. Those three triangles need to point to your collimation screws if you were doing this just on the SCT. And then the same thing with the Hyperstar. Even though there's not one screw to point them to, I just point it roughly in between the push-pull screws on the Hyperstar. Uh, the other issue that I have is I have the Celestron dew heater ring on here. So this is not going to sit completely flush. But I'm hoping that it'll be okay anyways. But we'll try and get these in there. And then see what it looks like. On the screen. I'm going to move my cable management out of the way. All right, so we're lined up, and I'm just going to zoom in on Vega, get a better look at those stars. So actually, I think that looks pretty good. Um, it may be just a little bit off, so the stars on the edge of my images may be a little flared. You can see on this spike here, as well as the one 180 degrees on the other side of it, it looks like it's got an extra spike that is 
from me cutting the tribatinoff mask in half so the light is getting through that cut as well but like i said i think they look okay i'm not real particular about the stars as long as it's just the edges that get affected if something's a little bit out i can deal with that we're cropping anyways to get artifacts out after the stack and if there's a little bit more that needs to be, be removed, then a little bit extra of a crop isn't going to kill me either. So, like I said, I think that looks pretty good. I will show a series of images that I've taken with my Hyperstar at the end of this video. So stick around and watch for that. That wraps up getting everything installed, configured, and we're ready to start imaging. I just absolutely love this thing. I mean, the results that I get out of it in the short amount of time that I shoot with it. I mean, I'm pulling details out that I've never even seen before. God knows how long I'd actually have to shoot at F10 or F7 to see that kind of detail. So real quick before I show you the first few images I've taken with this guy, just want to say thank you to all my members, both here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. Appreciate everybody's support. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Like the video, share it. It helps the algorithm push me out. Channel's growing because of you guys and I really appreciate it. And again, thank you to everybody. So now let's take a look at the first images I've taken with my new Hyperstar. <laughs>